All right, so I'm trying to get the Mustang uh, straightened in the garage and then pushed back a little bit. Just so you guys know, these Harbor Freight uh, moving dollies can't take the weight of a car. No surprise, but you know, I thought I'd try. My new and improved dolly seems to work. <laughs> All right, so I got that dolly on this side. And then another one right there. Um, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to push this, but we'll try it. Okay, I'm amazed that worked. <laughs> That's crazy. Much straighter now. Now all I gotta do is push it back. Let's see if we can do that. So I can't get it to move backwards. Um, so what I'm gonna do is move the Explorer out of the way and get the truck and just give it a little nudge. The, the hitch lines up pretty much perfect with the bumper there. So I'm just gonna give it a push back with the truck and hopefully these things don't break. <laughs> Look at that, in the garage, looking good. Just notice that there's bearings all over the place, I wonder where those came from. Alright so the other night uh, tried to start the Mustang and it didn't go that well, it only ran for around 10 seconds. It's running rough, I don't know why. Yeah, I'll shut it up. Huh, I'll have to look into that. Maybe it doesn't have any gas. So I thought it might be a fuel issue, so the first thing to check is to see if uh, the fuel line is good, because maybe it got kinked in the crash. So let's take a look. So, there it is. It goes all the way to the front fuel filter all the way back here and I, I followed it up to the gas tank. I don't see any issues with that so I think I'm going to rule that out as an issue for now. Um, on my way to work today, figured out what was wrong with the Mustang. Kind of embarrassed that I didn't think about it earlier. Um, so when you get in an accident, uh, the car shuts off the fuel pump so it doesn't spray fuel. Uh, all over the you know the place to start a fire so what they do is they they shut the fuel pump off and um, I knew I knew Ford's how it works is if you do a couple of ignition cycles it'll reset the system but um, what I didn't think about is on older cars they actually have uh, they call it an inertial ship switch uh, it's a mechanical switch that gets set um, and you have to actually press it uh, in order to reset it and I should have known that because when I was in high school, I uh, took my parents' uh, Ford Expedition out and 
screwing around with some buddies in a parking lot. Uh, it just just snowed, so there was like a foot of snow on the ground. Um, so we uh, we go take it over a, a median. We drive it over a median, maybe going like 20 miles an hour. Got some air, and when the car landed on the ground, uh, the engine just stalled. So on private property and uh, I'm like we gotta get a tow truck so I gotta push it to a public road so in about a foot of snow um, we push the car to the road and I decided at that time okay I'm gonna I'm gonna call my dad you know I gotta tell him what's going on so I call him he's like oh why don't you go check the switch in the back of the car? I'm like, what switch? He's like, all right, there's a switch. You gotta open up. Ooh, you gotta open up the body panel uh, in the back of the car. You press that switch, and that'll reset the fuel system. Well, sure enough, did that. Car started. My buddies are like, why do we have to push that car so far? But that's what's going on here at the Mustang. Um, it's really dark, but I looked it up, and there's a panel back here or actually I think I feel it so there's a little hole you can barely see it I'm pretty sure you just press that so I just press that okay so let's put the seat back and let's give this guy a start again I think that's actually gonna, gonna solve the issue Put the clutch in, that might help. And there you go. Starts right up. That was it. All right, so the engine's running. We do have a leak here. The top of the radiator, I'm not sure where exactly, but definitely something we'll have to look into. Alright, this is the first I've gone under the car. First thing I notice, engine mount destroyed. Look at that. Broke it. It's crazy. I hope it didn't do any other damage. You can see the uh, header is now resting on the engine mount. Um, so that's crazy. The other thing, let's see if we, transmission mount is all jacked up. So hopefully, I'm gonna have to get a new one of those, but hopefully the, the transmission itself, the mount point is not destroyed. So I'm gonna take the, uh, the fuel uh, system out of here, the fuel pump. I uh, pulled the seat up, uh, the, the fuel module should be under there, should be under this cap, so we're going to take that off. I'm going to drain all the fuel out, then I'm actually going to, to winterize the engine or to, you know, to prep it for storage. I'm actually going to run some two-stroke uh, mix in the fuel, uh, run it for a few minutes, uh, maybe put some fuel stable in there as well, uh, that way uh, the engine will be... Uh, nice and good uh, when I start back up in a year or two. So that just pops up. The, uh, looks like it shifted. All right, so before I disconnect this, I actually should probably uh, depressurize the system. So I'm gonna do that real quick. To depressurize the uh, system, I'm pretty sure you just pull this guy right here. And hopefully that'll do it. Let's give it a start. Okay, I'm gonna spray this out uh, to clean it up a little bit. It's super dirty, so I'm gonna get some compressed air.
right, so I think you just give it a little tap, tap, tap. Easier said than done, I guess. There we go. So let's get the fuel line on. This is shifted. It's gonna be kind of hard to get this out. I don't want to break too much. I'm actually gonna get some something that puts this on. Okay, let's get in. Get in somewhere. So there's a crossover, ooh, I just got water. There's a crossover thing. Let's take that off. So I probably have to do the same thing on the other side to get the fuel on both sides over out. I didn't film it, but this is my super sketch. Uh, I put some two-stroke gasoline in there. Kind of shoved the fuel module in there. I don't know if this really worked at all. The garage really smells bad, but um, plus the engine was running really, really rough, so maybe it was super lean. But I don't know. That's as much as I'm going to do. I'll probably give up for now. So it's a new day. Uh, didn't end up getting the engine out the other night, um, but. It allowed me some time to rethink some things. So first thing I did was uh, change the oil. I'm gonna be storing this engine for at least a year. Or so um, just wanna make sure that the oil is kind of free of contaminants. Uh, also, I kinda of wanna run the engine to get the oil all circulated. And I did a really crappy job of uh, getting that two stroke oil in. So I'm actually taking the fuel line off. So I already got this far. I will just take the rest out of the engine compartment. Then we'll hook it up uh, outside of the car here uh, to uh, run some two-stroke oil into there. And hopefully that'll be a little bit more uh, robust than what we were doing in the back seat before.
Alright, so I bought this tool on Amazon, thinking, oh yeah, this will work. This will, you know, take this quick connect for the fuel line off. Wrong size. So, I thought it would be... I should have checked the size. But in case you want to know, you can get this. Uh, it was 11 bucks. And you need the 5.8s one uh, for this guy here on the, on the V8 Mustang. Um, yeah. Also, when you take that off, make sure you have a bucket under the other end. <laughs> Alright, so this is the whole fuel line taken out. There was another quick connect thing where that tool ended up being helpful. So, there you go.